My name is Anna Sun, and the title of my book is Confucianism as a World Religion, Contested Histories and Contemporary Realities. In a recent survey of Chinese religious life, among 7,000 people interviewed, only 12 called themselves Confucians or believers of Confucianism as a religion. Why is this discrepancy? I realized that to understand this question, one has to go deep into the history of the concept of Confucianism as a world religion. In my book, I focus on three key aspects. The first is a historical construction of the concept of Confucianism as a world religion. And this led me back to the 19th century, when comparative religion as a discipline was first formed in Europe. It was in that context that Confucianism became one of the eight great world religions. The second aspect that I examine is methodological. Who are the Confucians in China? Because of this conception of Confucianism as a world religion has taken hold in our popular as well as scholarly imagination, in social scientific research, people often ask, well, who are the Confucians in China and how many are there? I address this issue through my own survey research as well as field work, arguing that the way we label Confucianism as a world religion does not quite work in Chinese reality. In China, people very often do not have strong affiliations with a single religion, such as Buddhism or Taoism or Confucianism. Um, so if you look for um, self-identification, you will find very few Confucians in China. However, if you focus on other aspects of social and religious practice, you will see Confucianism is in fact a very important part of Chinese social and religious life. The third aspect of my research deals with the revival of Confucius worship in China today. I have studied um, about a dozen Confucius temples in China and I have discovered this revival, not only of Confucius worship, but other rites related to Confucianism. Since 2004, the government has consciously promoted Confucianism in many different areas in social life in China. For instance, the slogan, harmonious society, has been promoted. For instance, Confucius was referenced many times during the opening ceremonies of the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. And also since 2004, more than 400 Confucius institutes have been established all over the world, promoting the learning of Chinese language as well as Chinese culture. But one gets a feeling that such political promotion of Confucianism actually may have a short shelf life. In March 2013, a new political administration has come to power, and with it, a new slogan, the China Dream. I suspect that we will not hear too much about Confucianism from this administration. Confucianism has been used as a chess piece in China's political culture. With the new slogan of the China dream, one gets the feeling that Confucianism may be um, pushed aside as something that, um, that is useful for the global promotion of Chinese culture, but nothing more. In my own research, I have seen Confucian activists pushing 
to have Confucianism considered a Chinese national or even state religion. Their concern is that China's political future is intimately connected to the ethical and moral content of its government. And Confucianism can offer a foundation that goes back into the deep reservoir of Chinese um, political, moral, and ethical thought. However, I believe that Confucianism should be one of the many components of the so-called Chinese civil religion. 